Hey everyone, this is Dawn. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make four cards using the July stamp of the month called the Bee's Knees. So it has this fun bee and floral image. And we'll focus on that for all four cards along with uh, the various sentiments that are part of the set. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to use uh, some of the new mix-ins for July, August, and I've got the Sundance and the Sage colored ones, and I'm going to use both sides, and I'm trimming off three quarters of an inch strips. And then I have a base of White Daisy, which is four by five and a quarter, and then I'm going to trim my strips down to three and three quarter inches. Okay, so... I've got six of these and then I'll wind up cutting another piece of that sage. So I'm going to lay them out on this piece of white daisy starting in the center and then I'm going to stagger the strips so they're sort of uneven and gives a little interesting look to them. So we'll lay them out and then like I said I needed one more of the sage color so we'll trim that up and add that and then we'll get them all added to this piece of white daisy. Okay, so we'll just lay them down with tape runner starting in the middle. So I'm just using the measurements on my uh, verse mat and I'm just going to lay them down and then we'll stagger those other strips and I'm using both sides of the patterns. It's a little hard to see on camera here but there's uh, two different patterns on each of those strips. So, just uh, varying the colors. And it's okay if this one's hanging over the edge. I'll show you how to fix that in a second. And I didn't exactly get them straight either. So, I'm going to bring in my guillotine trimmer and just chop off the ends. <laughs> Quick and easy way to fix that. And they're still uneven, but I'm okay with that. All right, so I'm going to bring in my Misty. And I have this large B stamp in it. And I'm just going to lay it down and then pick it up with the door of the Misty. And with large stamps like this, make sure you don't see any air bubbles. So that's what I'm doing here is pressing out the air bubbles. And it gives you a more even stamped image without uh, as many voids. But of course with the Misty you can stamp as many times as you need to pick up those areas that don't stamp. So I'm stamping with White Daisy and one and done. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to bring in some white embossing powder and sprinkle that because this White Daisy is pigment powder and so it stays wet for quite some time. And I just want it to be nice and bold. So I'm sprinkling white embossing powder on that and then I'm melting it real quick with my heat tool. And we have a nice bold white image. And then I'm going to take some pine cardstock and trim that down to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is an A2 card base size. And I'm going to bring in some pine ink to stamp my sentiment. So I'm going to use this bold high sentiment and just put that down the lower right corner and make sure since you're pressing over several pieces of cardstock and paper press down really hard to make sure it picks up all of the ink okay now we can layer our card up and put it all together pretty quick and simple for those of you who don't like to color in and do detail coloring with uh, tri-blends or uh, watercolor pencils or colored pencils, um, this is a quick way to use this image and still kind of get a wow factor from it. Okay, so I'm just layering everything up with some Tombow Tape Runner. And then I'm going to bring in some dots. So I have some green dots and I have some yellow dots and decided on the yellow ones and I'm just going to scatter a bunch of these around my bee. This is a fun stamp set to work with. Lots of great sentiments. 
Those images are really fun. Okay, we're going to call this one done. All right, we'll have some close-up shots here. Super cute. Okay, so all four of my cards are going to use the same B image. All right, next card, I'm going to use some Harbor cardstock, and I'm hitting it with some anti-static powder. And I'm going to stamp this out, same thing as the last one, stamp it out in white daisy. And then I'll heat emboss it with white embossing powder. Get that stamped out. And this time I decided I wanted a little more ink. Get that inked up and then We'll put some embossing powder on that. First, I'm going to touch up that little antenna that didn't get ink. You can use the embossing pens to do touch-ups before you add your powder, and it fixes it. So then we'll add powder and melt it with the heat tool. And then off camera, I buffed it out with uh, anti with a microfiber cloth. Okay, so these are the sprigs and leaves uh, stencils, and it's a layering stencil set. So I'm going to use both the stencils, and I'm going to start with White Daisy. So I have treated it with some pixie spray to make it um, tacky, and then I've also put down my Altenew uh, sticky mat, and I've got a pouncing tool here. Um, I got these off Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description below and I'm pouncing some white daisy ink in these openings on the stencil and I'm strategically placing the ink so that it's around the bee and not over the bee so I'm going to bring in a detail blending brush and then kind of fill in some of those areas closer to the bee that I couldn't get with the pouncing tool I'm just doing some touch-ups and then we'll do the reveal. Okay, then I'm going to flip this stencil around and use the other side of it just to add a little interest and do the same exact thing. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to bring that same exact stencil in. I've cleaned everything up and I'm uh, going to place it down and just stagger it ever so slightly so that it's a little offset from the original pattern. Okay, so it's just down like an eighth of an inch, maybe even less than that. Then I'm gonna bring in some Harbor ink and ink over those openings with Harbor. So make sure before you place your stencil down that you hit your uh, card panel with your heat tool and make sure that uh, pigment ink is completely dry. You don't want to contaminate your ink pad and you don't want anything to smear. So make sure you do that before you place your stencil down. Make sure your ink is completely dry and then you can go ahead and ink up. Okay, and then I went back with that detail blending brush and picked up those areas that were too close to the bee. And since it's embossed, you can always buff out any ink that winds up on the bee. And then I flip my stencil around again and set it down offset just ever so slightly and inked it up with Harbor. Okay, so now you could call that done and move on or you can do this and go in with the detail stencil. And I've got that placed down and then I'm going to use some avocado. And this time I'm going to use a, a pouncing, not a pouncing tool, it's a sponge dauber and I'm going to go in and carefully add a little avocado ink to each of those leaves and then I'll do the same thing and flip the stencil around and place it down and then ink up those openings with avocado ink okay all right so that panel's all done now I'm going to stamp my sentiment okay so I'm going to bring in some harbor ink and white daisy and I'm going to stamp just because, okay? 
And then I've got some banner dies. These are from Waffle Flower. And off camera, I've cut that out. Okay, so I have a banner cut with my sentiment, and then I'm bringing in some avocado cardstock, and I'm cutting this at four and a quarter by five and a half for card base. And we'll start layering things together. Okay, so this will be a landscape card. I find it's easier to add that first panel uh, portrait so that you can line it up on the edge there. And get everything layered up and then add my sentiment. And then, of course, I have to add some bling. So I've got these half pearls. They're from Buttons Galore and More, and they're kind of iridescent. They're actually really cool. And on Harbor, these green ones, oh my gosh, they look so cool. So I'm just going to scatter a whole bunch of those around. We'll have some close-up shots in a second. Okay, and we're going to call that one done. So it looks three-dimensional, but it's all flat except for the pearls, of course. Okay, and here's some close-up shots. Super fun. I'll show you this technique on another video with a different stencil. And we'll get uh, more in detail and use different colors with that one. Okay, so now I have a honeycomb stencil. This is from a, an old retired Close My Heart set. I think it's from three years ago when we first started doing stencils. So just check your stash. So I've got that down with some black cardstock and I'm going to use some of the Simon Hurley uh, solar paste. Okay, so this one is in, what color is it? Golden Hour. And I'm just going to spread a whole bunch of this around and then just pull it down with the spatula and uh, get complete coverage, but try to go as thin as you can on it because the thinner it is the quicker it dries and I'm impatient but you can always hit it with your heat tool to make sure it's completely dry but anyway um I've got it all pulled down and as thin as possible get nice coverage even coverage and then we'll pull the stencil off and see the magic So fun. Check that out. And it looks even cooler once it's dry. So make sure that you clean everything up right away because when this stuff dries, it's like concrete. Okay, so now I have a piece of uh, Tim Holtz Distress uh, watercolor paper. And I've got this uh, B stamp in my Misty, working out all the bubbles. I'm going to stamp in black ink. Now when you're stamping with black or um, basically any color on the watercolor paper, um, you're going to have to stamp it a few times to get complete coverage. It's just the nature of the cardstock and um, using a large stamp. So I'm going to do this a few times, make sure I've got it completely stamped out. And that's the beauty of the Misty. You can do it as many times as you need to. And then I'm going to go in with a black journal pen and cover up those couple of tiny spots that still didn't stamp out. Okay, now I'm cleaning up my stamp really, really well because I'm going to stamp over it in the same exact spot, making sure it's all dry, with Versamark ink. Okay. So we'll get that stamped. And then I'm going to sprinkle some clear embossing powder on top of this. So basically I'm sealing in that black ink with clear embossing powder on top. And that way you can use water products and not have any of your black ink smear. Okay, so we'll heat this up, melt that embossing powder, and we're good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in some of these Nuvo Shimmer powders. All right, I have Solar Flare and Violet Brocade, and 
little goes a long way with this stuff and I've actually tapped out too much. Um, just tap it and get a little bit of powder on your project and then spritz it with water. And then just let it do its magic. Let it sit. And then off camera after it's dried, I have fussy cut this out. Okay, so now we can stamp our sentiment. And this is on uh, white daisy cardstock with black ink. And I'm stamping out, thinking of you, sweet friend. Okay, so I'm going to create a little banner with this. I'm just trimming around the sentiment, leaving a little extra on the right side so that I can dovetail it. Bring in my micro tip scissors, super sharp scissors, and just cut in the center and then take each corner to meet that cut. Okay, so now my solar paste is all dry and we're ready to start assembling. Okay, so I have a piece of black cardstock that's cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. We'll just layer things together. And this time I'm, I want to make sure that's completely dry. I don't want it to smear by turning it over. So I put my tape runner on the black cardstock and then I'll add the solar paste panel. And that's the basic design of my card. So we'll go ahead and add the sentiment down in the lower left corner. And we'll pop that B with foam tape. Okay. And then, of course, I have to add some bling. So I'm going to bring in some of these jewels. Uh, they're flat back jewels from Buttons Galore and More. And this, these are the purple ones. It's kind of cool the way they look on this uh, solar paste. And just scattered a whole bunch of those around. Okay, so now we've got some close up shots. And look at that shimmer and shine of that shimmer powder. Quick way to get color on this image with some pearlescent shine. Okay, last card. I'm going to stamp out this B and I'm, I've offset it off of this piece of white daisy cardstock. So part of the wing is off the edge. Get everything cleaned up here. And I've stamped it out in black ink. And then I'm going to color this in with some tri-blend markers. We'll do that off camera. Okay, it's a pretty quick and easy image to color in. And then I'm gonna stamp my sentiment. It says, you're the bee's knees. And then I'll trim down this uh, panel. It started out at four inches square and I'm just gonna trim this down to three and three quarters. Sorry, three and a half inches square. And then I'll trim out a piece of black cardstock to mat that with at three and three quarters. So this one's going to be a portrait orientation card. And then I'm going to mat everything on black. So that's cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to bring in some more of this uh, mix in paper. Cut that down to four by five and a quarter and a piece of black shimmer trim. So this is retired, but you can always use uh, some of the black glitter paper and just cut half an inch strip by four inches and you're good to go. So we'll just layer all this up and put everything together. So the stamp of the month is available during the month of July with any $50 purchase, you can get it for $5, or if you're a VIP, you can get it for free. So I'll make a list of all of the supplies that I've used, there's quite a few, for all of these projects, with links in the description below. So I've popped that whole panel with foam tape, and then we'll add our shimmer trim, and to finish it off, I'm gonna add some of these yellow dots in the heart shape. We'll put a couple of those in the center of the shimmer trim strip. And then we'll call it good. So many fun things you can do with this stamp set. And here's some close-up shots. 
So I appreciate you watching my video. I know this was a long one. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and then you'll be able to find all of my videos. And thanks for watching.